I recently made a video on the EOS 600 that was launched I think in 1989, 1990 saw this Canon and it's a Canon EOS 10 and if we compare it with the um, 600 there are some similarities on the top however the big change is in the one dial which was to become very much of a standard feature on single lens reflex cameras. The camera is slightly more plastic than the 600. However, the big improvement was seen in the faster automatic um, focusing of the camera. And here I've got a 35 to 70 lens on, um, a clear display. The modes are, we've now got the standard portrait landscape flower, where on the 600 we had um, seven program modes, which took those into account. And then we've got program, TV, AV, depth, and um, a camera shake mode and a manual mode. So we have all the information there. We've got good information on the top. We've got um, equally good information in the format for LEDs in the viewfinder. It's an ergonomically nice camera to hold. To load the film is as simple in the back and the film runs on. These cameras are still the later year OS has had the, I think, incredibly useful factor that it used to rhyme the whole film on first and then rhyme back. So if someone did open your camera by mistake, that what you had taken was already in the cassette. Um, the EOS 10 doesn't do that, it still rhymes on immediately. Um, we have got ability to rhyme back mid row. So I said it's a lighter camera than the 600. Um, the autofocusing is lovely. Um, the battery is rather it's a it's a 2CR5. These are still quite easy to obtain. These are still quite easy to obtain. Not the cheapest battery in the world, but neither are they the dearest battery in the world. So battery goes in the holder there. And that is basically it. Um, I think the EOS 10 was a camera which really set the ground running for the 90s and what was actually to become the standard conventional single lens reflex camera that then developed into the DSLR and the whole range of Canon 350s, 400s, 450s, 600s, 1000s and, and it continues. Let's see how I got on using this in the field. This photo shoot is in Swanies on the Dorset coast and it's based at Darston Castle which was built by a extraordinary Victorian entrepreneur called George Burt who wanted to build a resort and he was going to build lots of houses in this part of Swallis but he started with a restaurant and this um, castle-like structure which was a sort of tourist um, centre place and it was called Durston Castle and around it he had um, gardens, paths and you will see in a later photograph this extraordinary stone globe he built with um, sayings around the globe. You'll see that in a little bit. Um, this is Durston Castle, as I said, it's 1900, um, sorry, 1890, and I'm using this Canon EOS, which is so easy to use. Not only is it easy to use, but it feels quite nice as well. It is lighter than the 600 I was talking about in this previous episode. And it's in a sense very similar to what we would call a conventional DSLR. 
This is where Canon really began to sort of develop, I think, what we now think of as the modern camera. It's as I said, so light to use. We have all the commands on one um, dial. Um, the lens is fast. The autofocusing, I remember when these first came out and I thought it was absolutely extraordinary as a camera because it was so fast and you could pick the zone. However, using one today, you do notice how it's not as fast or not as... Um, responsive as a modern lens it is responsive but sometimes it goes for a different focusing point here we have the globe i was talking about which is absolutely huge and around it are lots of tablets with um, poetry on and sayings and good works you've also got all these metal posts around and these metal posts came from london because george burt was <coughs> exporting lots of stone and he had to bring back bits of London in order to for balance of the boats. But as you see, 1891, it is a good place to try out a camera because you've got so many angles, so many um, things to look at. I think the grayscale is quite good here. I think the sharpness is absolutely fine. I'm using exactly the same lens as I did with the uh, with the 650, with the 600. Um, Again, he's put a stone here so people could carve their names on this stone instead of defacing the globe. He was a very far thinking man, George Burt. Um, there's a lot to see here. There's some brilliant coastal walks. And as I said, it's a really good place to try out a camera. Um, I was really, you know, I've used a lot of the OSs over the years and I, I do find the early ones to be slightly more reliable than the later ones. So it's EOS 10 was a camera that I don't think I have used before or, or it was a long time ago and I was as I said really brilliant with how it turned out i'm pleased with these negatives you can see how sharp and good grayscale and everything you want the exposure system i was mainly using it on program i did use it on landscape i even did one or two on manual i found it worked brilliantly on program but i did sometimes have to take it off the automatic um focus as especially with lots of trees these types of cameras can still get a little bit confused if there's a branch in the ray of the focusing point um, the film i used was dx coded i think you can overcome yeah, um, if it's not um, again it was a brilliantly sunny afternoon when i took these photos the camera coped very well with the shade as well as the bright parts i was really pleased with this camera and they are moderately cheap it's just making sure that if you buy one you buy a working one many thanks for watching enjoy your your photography bye for now